Addiction is caused by cell damage in the powerful midbrain reward system, where pleasure is registered and compulsive behavior triggered, which paralyzes the area where moral decisions are made. Pleasure occurs when dopamine is released to cross the accumbens synapses, induced at different rates. Cocaine increases dopamine by blocking its return. Crystal meth does both. Flooding causes loss of dopamine receptors and long-term damage. Addicted people now need the substance just to prevent sickness symptoms. Around 20% of drug users become addicted. Acute sensitivity to stress hormones underlies addiction. Half is genetic. Addiction is a long-term but not permanent disability. Altered brain cells seem to reset at a natural rate. People become abstinent with treatment, but they also become abstinent without treatment. William Halsted was the father of modern surgery and founded Johns Hopkins Hospital, despite lifelong addiction. Some of the most creative, productive people have addictions. Many manage their disabilities with their own maintenance regimes. Drug laws prevent management. They make maintenance programs or gradual withdrawal illegal. Society has lost so much creativity as some die unnecessarily without support to manage their disabilities safely. Drug prohibition causes three harms from the substance, prohibition prices, and the black market. Smugglers demand higher concentrations. Governments cannot regulate an illegal product, a deadly combination. Economists show the effect of prohibition. The addiction demand curve is steep. Enforcement removes supply, which raises prices, which creates windfall profits, attract more people to the industry and into addiction, which leads to stronger enforcement, a vicious cycle. Prohibition diverts money toward organized crime and even terrorist groups. Government policy ensures criminals are wealthy, well-armed, and their lifestyle attractive to young people. When British Columbia was governed by a private corporation, it had a harm reduction approach. Its first tax was on alcohol. Pubs were open 24 hours. Reform politics brought prohibition. Vancouver had a tax-paying legal opium industry till 1908 with few problems. When BC made alcohol illegal, doctors kept organized crime small by writing 300,000 medical alcohol prescriptions in one year. In the 1950s, Vancouver's addiction problem prompted the Senate to establish a commission. The mandatory drug treatment facility it recommended was a failure, creating a generation of educated drug criminals. Vancouver developed the world's first methadone maintenance program. More recently, some addicted people managed to obtain substances through prescriptions. Others were forced to get dangerous alternatives from the black market, though some got safe products through the diversion from the legal system. In late 2015, doctors were pressured to cut back opioid prescriptions. Many were forced to dangerous street drugs. Overdose deaths immediately increased as doctors were pressured even more, overdose deaths spiked. Others became seriously disabled, requiring lifelong public support. British Columbia has a new approach with North America's only supervised injection site and two medical trials showing heroin prescription is an effective treatment and that other opiates can be substituted. Hundreds of the most seriously addicted now get prescription heroin. Employment has doubled, homelessness erased, crime and prostitution dropped, and no fentanyl deaths. We may be on the verge of an effective approach to addiction.